Hello everybody, this week, no review video, sorry about that. This is actually just me taking the time to say thank you to everybody and also let you all know what's going to be happening with the future of the video channel. First of all, for the thank you, I want to let you all know that I broke 1,000 subscribers and I owe that to every single one of you. You all appreciate what I'm doing and I want to say thank you for all of you subscribing. It means a lot. I think it is very, very awesome. And since I'm using an image from the movie, Lego Movie, I'm now required to give a review of the movie. Otherwise, I get copyright laws, so I'm going to say... Lego Movie is also very awesome. When I started this video channel, I had no idea that I'd ever break 1,000 subscribers, and it makes me pretty darn happy to say it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's pretty darn cool. There's a time where everybody said that if you ever had a video review that was over 10 minutes, nobody would care, nobody would take the time to watch it, and you'd basically be wasting your time. I'm glad to see that people who said that were kind of wrong. There's a lot of people out there who actually are interested in learning how to play a game watching some gameplay and then seeing a video and they don't need it all done in 10 minutes and I'm going to again say thank you to every single one of you. My goal of this video channel was to make a very in-depth video channel where you, you know you could watch a video of a board game played and know that this was a board game that was right for you. I tried wanted to avoid what I like to describe as the used salesman quick pitch. I wanted you to be able to see a video and at the end of the video know if this is going to be a game that is 100% right for you and your play group and it looks like it's been a success. Now before we go any further, this is basically a video channel for you and for me. Believe it or not, I enjoy doing this, but if people wouldn't be subscribing, people wouldn't be watching, eventually I would stop doing this. As most of you probably know, I don't get review copies of games. I don't ask for review copies, but I also want to know what do you think about that. I have been offered review copies in the past, and is that a problem for people? Is that going to bother you? Give me a little bit of feedback. What do you feel about that? I mean, I don't have a problem with it because in my mind, I'm doing a very in-depth review basically teaching you how to play the game, letting you see the game, and then I'm giving you what I think is a very honest review of the game. Do you think you'd be bothered with seeing me getting review copies? Uh, what would you like me to do? Would you like me to preface it before I do every review, or is it a matter? Does anybody really even care? Also, how do you feel about RPG reviews? Now, the board game reviews do take a lot of time already. Is anybody interested in RPG reviews? I could probably start sliding those in also. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. One final thing, some of you ask me why I don't do overly negative board game reviews. Well, the simple fact is that most of the board games I own, I've purchased with my own money. So there's a good chance I'm probably not going to buy a board game that I don't think there's at least some chance that I'm going to like the game. Then when you add on the fact that I'm averaging probably anywhere from four and a half to five hours per video. So you look at one board game, the way the new format I started adopting, I do three videos for one board game. You're looking at five hours per video on average from the shooting to the editing to the uploading looking at about a total of 15 hours. So if I'm going to invest this much time into a board game, personally, I'm going to make sure I pick a board game that on some level I enjoy or like at least. Having said that though, I am actually going to bring out a board game review for a board game that I own and I still own that I am not a fan of at all. Now the reason why I still own the board game, you got to watch the review for that. But I am just letting you know that there may be some negative reviews coming down the pike. And one final note, some of you asked me why don't I show myself in the videos. Well, simple fact, these videos are about the board games, the board games only, and not about me. I'm pretty much like the unknown comment from the 80s, except I'm the unknown board game reviewer. And again, since I'm using a video image from some source that's copyrighted, I now have to say the unknown comment, really funny, check them out. This is a review. Anyways, on a serious note here, you're probably never going to see my face in these videos. Unless, hey, maybe if we get to 2,000 subscribers, maybe I'll, show, I'll go ahead and surprise all of you. Who knows? But most likely, it's not going to happen. Don't expect to see me in the videos because, again, these videos are about the board games, not about me, about the games. And now to let you know what you can expect to be coming from the future of the Author Shell Board Game YouTube channel. Obviously, the next big thing that you're going to see from me is a review of Caverna. Now, my Caverna box is a little bit crunched, and you'll probably see that in the view. Don't think that it's anything with the way Mayfair packed it. It's just the way it got shipped to me. FedEx decided to give it a quick gravity test. Luckily, the components on the inside survived the gravity test. Unfortunately, the box didn't, so it is kind of taped up, but it doesn't affect the game, and the game is still pretty darn fun. Here's the good news. I'm also going to start doing some more solo, or I should say I'm going to start doing some solo videos for some of you because some of you asked for it. Here's the bad news. It won't be with Caverna. Now, don't get me wrong, and this is kind of a spoiler about the future video re review that you're going to see about Caverna, but... The solo game for Caverna is solvable, and for me, I don't want to show you how to play a solo game that's 100% solvable because there's no randomizers in the solo game, and you'll see that when I show you how to play the game, and I'm actually going to make sure I make this comment in the video review. 
The point will be that, that Caverna as a solo game is pretty much like Sudoku. Once you solve it, you solved it. There's going to be an optimal score, and if I'm not mistaken, I think somebody on Board Game Geek has actually managed to break over 200 points in Caverna, and they actually gave their walkthrough on how to do it. So it is possible, but again, Caverna as a solo game is solvable. Now, while we're on the topic of Caverna, Caverna is actually the reason why there hasn't been a new video posted. My goal is always to get one video posted every two weeks. And that's kind of my objective. The unfortunate thing is during the summertime, it slows down a little bit because, well, I live in Alaska, which is a very outdoorsy place. Summer times are a little bit hard to stay inside. And not only that, I'm having a heck of a time trying to get six or seven people to sit down for Caverna. I'm going to give it one more try this weekend. And if a few extra people bail out and I only get another five player game, I'm going to go and wrap it up and I'm going to do the review and just in review, comment that I only played the game with one to five players. I can pretty much imagine how it's going to play with six or seven, so it's not going to be a big deal, at least I don't think so. But I just want to let you know that when I do review the game, it's not going to be from the six or seven player experience. It's going to be with the one through five player game. After the Caverna review, I'm going to go ahead and feed my personal Vlada addiction because I'm a huge fan of the designer of Vlada Shvadl. I enjoy all of his games. He hasn't designed a game that I do not like. And the next review we're going to get is we're going to get Dungeon Lords. Now, I really, really want to make sure I try to get this Dungeon Lords review done before the Kickstarter ends for the 5th edition anniversary edition of Dungeon Lords. And no, I'm not getting any free spiffs or anything from Chex Games edition. I've never gotten anything from Chex Games edition to be 100% frank. That doesn't bother me. I just want to let you know the reason why I'm doing this is because I think Dungeon Lords is a fantastic game. I think it's a game that everybody should play at least once, twice, dozen, 300 times, but that's just me. And I think the 5th Anniversary Edition is going to be the best way to ever, ever own Dungeon Lords. Now, personally, I don't plan on picking up the 5th Anniversary Edition, and that's just because I'm not a wasteful person. I own a copy of Dungeon Lords. I like all the components. Yeah, the board's a little bit thin. In the new editions, they have thicker boards, metal coins, blinged out, wooden box. But it's still Dungeon Lords, and this is still an awesome game. And it's going to be awesome whether it's in a wooden box or whether it's in this little cardboard box. The game is still awesome. Now, as I said, I'm a huge fan of Vlada Shavadl. I haven't disliked any design he's ever made, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Space Alert. Now, in my opinion, Vlada reminds me of somebody who in a prior life was a computer game programmer from the 1980s. He does really cool things, I enjoy all his games, and I am finally gonna do a video review for Mage Knight, the board game. Now, the cool thing is if you read my written review of Mage Knight, you know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to teach you how to play the game, so it's going to be even better. That means also I'm also going to show you how to play the solo game to help answer all those people asking me if I start doing more solo playthroughs. Mage Knight is going to be the first solo playthrough I'm going to show you guys. I'm actually going to do it as a separate series, separate from the video review, so I'm basically going to do my standard teach you, show you, review, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the solo play and then show you the solo game played all in one standard video. It's going to be a quicker, probably 25, 30 minute video because believe it or not, this game's not much harder to play solo rules. It's still a really awesome game and I'm not giving anything away because you read my written review and I still have the exact same opinion about Mage Knight, the board game. I also do plan to get eventually to Dungeon Pets and eventually to Through the Ages. Probably not immediately though. Once I get through these couple of Vlada Shavado games, I'm actually going to move on to some more lighter fare. Now at the opposite end of the spectrum from Vlada Shavado, you have Antoine Boza. And yes, I did email him to make sure I asked him exactly how to pronounce his last name because I didn't want to be one of those people who mispronounced his last name and he was kind enough to answer me. So it is Antoine Boza and I'm glad I asked him because I'm one of those weird people who's been pronouncing a Bowza forever and I'm glad I got the correct pronunciation for him. Anyways, expect reviews for Rampage eventually come down the pipe once I'm done with all these Vlada Shavado games. Expect a review for Takinoko, a game I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. And also expect a review for Seven Wonders with at least one of the expansions included, possibly with both the expansions. Depends on how confusing that is, but I'm willing to bet because the game is really easy to teach. I'll probably throw in both the expansions, but we'll see to it when we get to that point. Somewhere among here, I'm going to try to do a review series on a whole bunch of different dice games. Now, I enjoy dice games most of the time. And not to give that subtle hint away, but as I told you earlier, I'm going to be giving, doing a review of a board game that I'm not a huge fan of. I'll let you guess what it is. It's going to be one of these games that are laid out here on the pile, on the table, and I probably bet you can guess which one it is if you know anything about my board game style. Anyways, I'm hoping to manage to wrangle a copy of 
Roll Through the Ages, the Iron Age. I'm going to do a series of video reviews on dice games, which is going to include Couriers, the awesome Escape, which is the best 10 minutes you'll ever have with a board game, and also with Roll Through the Ages, the Iron Age, which if it's half as good as the Bronze Age, I know I'm going to like it. As I said, I also plan on throwing in some more solo videos, so expect a solo video review of Nations to eventually pop up. And again, it's not going to be a video review. I think I know what format I'm going to use for the solo games. I'm basically going to produce a video once you've seen the review. In a different series, I'm basically going to show you what additional rules are required for the solo play, and then just do the solo play. Probably going to be about a quicker 25-30 minute video, just so you can see how the solo play exactly works. Now I mentioned Roll Through the Ages, the Iron Age, just a few moments ago, which is a Kickstarter game. While I'm on the topic of Kickstarter, I want to let you know that I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of video reviews for Kickstarter games. Personally, and I'm not going to try to open the can of worms here at all and give opinions, but personally, I'm not a big backer of Kickstarter games. And the main reason why is, you know, if they don't offer me an extreme value where I think I'm getting a better value than I'll ever get in a retail store, I'm probably not going to support a Kickstarter game. And the simple reason is I prefer to support the local retailers. It's just me. It's what I do, and it's what I'm always going to do. Having said that, though, there will be some possible Kickstarter video reviews coming out sometime this year interspersed with all these other video reviews that I'm going to be doing for all these games on the table. One you can look for is you can look for Dead Zone Wave 2. You can also look for Mars Attacks. You can also look for Roll Through the Ages the Iron Age, obviously, since I've already mentioned that a few times. And finally, also look for Takedo the Collector's Edition. Now, I never owned the original Takedo, so I'm going to do a review with the official Collector's Edition. Why? Well, it looked pretty darn cool. My kids also thought it would be pretty darn cool, so I hit the buy button. I couldn't resist. They gave me the doughy eyes and said, please, Dad, please, and I melted and ordered it. I also backed the new Super Dungeon Explorer expansion. I don't expect it to come out this year, and I'm not trying to come down on Cool Mini or not, or soda pop miniatures or point fingers or anything like that i've just seen how all the kickstarters have come out and they're never on time so super dungeon explorer is supposed to be out in november i'll be happy if i see it by february but when it does come out you can definitely expect a review of the new super dungeon explorer expansion i like the original game my kids really love the original game and i definitely know it's going to get a lot of table time once i get it all painted up and now that I'm done talking about Kickstarter, I'm also going to mention one more type of game that you probably will not expect to see too many video reviews from me. And I'll explain to you really quickly why, and I'm going to throw out three very, very quick reviews for three very, very quick board games. Don't expect to see too many party games reviewed by me, because simply, I think there's three party games you all need to own. If you like alcohol and you're horrible people, Cards Against Humanity. If you like alcohol, you're horrible people, or you're civilized people, Telestrations. If you're civilized people and you got alcohol, but you're not horrible people, dicks it. That's my quick party game reviews. If you're looking for party games, buy all three of these. You'll never, ever go wrong. Now, any comments, questions, or feedback you have, please leave it below. Contact me. I'll make sure I get back to you. I always try to be active on the YouTube forums. Also, over on Board Game Geek, you can find me as Grumsh, G-R-U-M-S-H. Not Grumsh, because I don't want to violate copyright laws. Grumsh, G-R-U-M-S-H. Find me as that over on Board Game Geek. Also, you can find me on YouTube, obviously on the channel. Thanks for all your feedback, and as always, thanks again for watching and for subscribing.